When we're dealing with hydrogen and oxygen, one of the places that we get these is out of the water. So we got to talk about the water cycle. And this is going to look at the general concept of the water cycle. The water cycle looks like this no matter where you're at. Some of the things vary, such as temperature, but it's going to be basically the same. This is the water cycle according to the U.S. Geological Service. Basically, what we've got is a vast reservoir of water on planet Earth in the oceans. Three quarters of the Earth is covered with ocean. This is salt water, so therefore it's not really good water for plants to be taking up. And what happens is we get water evaporating out of the ocean area. It goes up into the atmosphere. It condenses in the forms of clouds. And this is all due to warming from the sun, which warms the water, which gets it to evaporate. You get condensation. Up in the sky, you have the formation of clouds. And clouds is basically moisture vapor. Eventually, it will get to the point where there is a lot of vapor in the air where we hit what we call the dew point. And the dew point is where the material condenses out of the air. So our relative humidity goes to 100%. When that happens, we get precipitation. The precipitation comes down in the form of either rain or frozen precipitation, where it will accumulate or it will, in liquid form, run off. Some of the material coming down onto the earth will infiltrate into the ground where it will form in the groundwater. And some of the groundwater is stored and some of the groundwater flows down to places where it comes out. In Florida, we get groundwater coming out of the ground in the form of springs. This gives us fresh water because all of the material that comes out of the atmosphere basically has been distilled. So we get material coming down. We can get runoff on top of the ground, which gives us streams and rivers. It can accumulate in depressions, and we call those lakes. That material can evaporate as well. We can get what we call sublimation. Sublimation is going from a frozen state or a solid state to a gaseous state. And this occurs with things like snow, where it will go from the solid state to the gaseous state. We get what is called evapotranspiration. And evapotranspiration is where a plant picks it up out of the soil and it evaporates out of the plant leaf. So with water, we are getting this recycling of it on a constant basis. The atmosphere holds about a 10-day supply of fresh water, which is not much. But the oceans have volumes of water that is in a salty state, and all that needs to happen is you get the sun coming down on it, and it's going to evaporate it. So our geological water cycle looks like this, and it really doesn't matter where you're at. You can add some different parts in on it and everything, but basically it is a concept that looks like this. When we look at annual average precipitation in the United States, this is a map that shows you where precipitation is high, precipitation is low. You can see the blues are much higher. They are concentrated along the coastal regions of Northern California, Oregon, and Washington and into the higher mountains of the Cascade Range. And then it is concentrated next highest in the eastern United States. And basically what happens is we have low pressure systems that come from west to east. They rotate counterclockwise, so there will be a trailing front. The trailing front will bring in moisture on the western part of the United States, but as these go up over the mountains, the mountains scrub the area of moisture. So in the Rocky Mountain states, we get a lot of red because we don't get a lot of moisture because the atmosphere has already been scrubbed of this because the mountains are high enough to take the clouds out. Then as these progress over the central part of the United States, the front will get out and the will come down over around Texas and touch the Gulf and pull warm, moist air off of the Gulf. And that's going to give us all the precipitation that we get around the Gulf states and the southern states. And you can see around the tip of North Carolina, you've got a concentration area in there. And that's because that's where the mountains start to get much higher. So when we look at annual average precipitation in the United States, it goes from anywhere less than five inches a year to more than 180 inches a year. And 180 inches a year is six yards, and six yards comes out to a little over five meters. Average annual precipitation, all of this goes back to water cycle, and all of this is very important.